Kathleen, you can open it. What we're going to be doing this evening is that mother, uh, that we have collected questions that you have written on cards and a certain number of questions have been selected. Mother has not seen them and she will be taking each question and then answering it. I'm just going to go ahead and start because it doesn't matter if you're coming in. You can all hear me, right? I could, I could shuffle the deck here, <laughs> right? What's so funny? <laughs> you're all laughing at me again, OK? <laughs> OK, here's the question. I am an identical mirror twin. Can you give some teaching on the karma of twins? Origin of Alexandria actually spoke extensively on this because he used it uh, to show that there could be karma made prior to a child's birth. Um, Jacob and Esau were warring in their mother's womb, and so one or the other came out first, and the one who came out first was always over the other one. So Jacob was all of, always over Esau. So there was this big controversy because Origen had the courage to say, the reason why they're fighting in the womb is because they had karma in a previous life. But the church fathers did not tolerate that because they did not want to pass on the teaching of reincarnation. I would say, in general, then, that the karma of twins in the womb can be very good karma, can be that they're very close to one another and, and they have a destiny to fulfill together. Or it could be the same type of thing. They have a karma together that started in the womb, and therefore, they, this person might be an identical twin on that count. Obviously, I cannot search the mind of God and discover this question for you individually. Okay. okay. Have there been others of the African race to ascend since the ascended master Afra? If so, have any of them been of African American descent? I would like very much to be able to tell you the answer to this, question, to this question, but I do not know the answer. But when I receive the information, I will tell you and shout it from the housetops. So far, I don't know two of the answers. <laughs> we'll, see. we'll see what happens. If one backslides and sins due to an addiction, how does one get back on the path and balance the karma? As we know, addictions come in all kinds and colors. And some people have very private addictions, and some have open addictions. In most addictions, unless you are a chila of the Ascended Masters, you decree, and so forth, but in most of these addictions, we need help. And today, more than ever in the world, in the United States, there is a lot of help for people who have addictive personalities or are addicted to drugs, sex, perverted sex, alcohol, you know, all kinds of addictions that people have. Um, so if you cannot overcome an addiction simply by prayer, you need to go to a counselor who deals with the addiction that you have. And there are wonderful counselors today, wonderful therapists, therapists. But after all is said and done, you have to win the battle. No one can win the battle of an addiction for you, but a lot of people can support you and help you. But you can't have a secret closet where you have a secret addiction to this or that. 
You have to make it on your own. I had the desire to give up sugar completely and entirely, and I found it to be a major challenge because I eat a lot of young food. I'm strong and charging. I'm a young person. And so not to eat sugar was not to be able to balance my youngness. So I went to the altar any number of times, probably about three, to ask Jesus to give me the strength to not touch this substance again, because I knew that this substance was very harmful to me. Just simple sugar, like a piece of candy or a piece of gum or anything that had sugar in it. So by the time that I came to the place where I said, this is it, this is the end of it, I had gone before the altar a number of times. And I finally came to the conclusion that I loved my life, and I loved my God, and I loved my chilas more than shortening my life by eating sugar. So that's, that's what happened. So if you have an addiction and you appeal to Jesus, remember that he is forgiving. And if you don't go back to him and go back again and again because you are ashamed of something that you do, well, you're not taking advantage of the most glorious Prince of Peace that is in our midst. So really, you have to go to the altar of God if you want to have done with a situation or an addiction in your life. I don't intend to eat my son's birthday cake on his birthday either. I simply cannot do it. An addiction is something that you have to stop entirely. You can't go back and nibble here and nibble there. It just does not work. This says, if a soul has not found joy in life and expresses a desire to go through the second death, when they die, would they be allowed to? God would not allow you to go through the second death unless you had merited the second death by horrendously evil deeds. If a soul has not found joy in life, the soul must seek the joy of the Lord and Savior. Jesus said that my joy might be in you and that your joy might be full. You can't sit and wait for joy to come into your lap you have to prime the pump of the fountain of joy. If you know someone who desires to go through the second death, and that one does not want to hear of anything else, the best you can do is to give daily calls to Astraea Bind the dweller on the threshold of that one. Bind the demons and discarnates who are around that one. Do everything you know how to do that you have been taught to help someone. Ultimately, the individual has free will. But again, if the soul does, does not merit the second death, he is not going to be given the second death. Do angels have free will? The angels of God in heaven have free will. They subordinate themselves to the hierarchies above them. And they minister unto us who call upon them. So in the sense that we command an archangel to bind the fallen angels, we are giving a command to that archangel. The Apostle Paul tells us, Know ye not that ye shall command angels? If so, how much more that, that you must do as sons and daughters of God? So we have been told to command the archangels to bind death and hell in the earth, to bind the fallen ones, etc., etc. So God has said, 
that his sons and daughters may command angels. And when the sons and daughters command the angels, and that command is to fulfill the law of God, to fulfill the, the mandate of the son or daughter of God, and, and it is lawful for the angels to perform this, then they will do it. Angels will not perform deeds that violate God's laws. In that sense of the word, they have free will to not give you what you are asking for because it violates the law of God. So we are expected to command angels. I was talking um, with some people some time ago, and these are people who read the Bible all the time and can quote, quote the whole Bible. But they were not aware of this, this verse of the Apostle Paul in Corinthians, know ye not that ye will command angels, that ye shall command angels. And so I pointed that out, and I realized to myself it must be the case that in certain churches, Protestant churches, people have not been given this understanding. But you see, how can we fight the warfare of Armageddon without the angels? We can't. It says that um, we, let's see. God has put his sons and daughters above the archangels. That's the basic point of what I'm trying to get. So because we know it, we must do it. Is Mohammed an ascended master? Mohammed has reincarnated and is in our community. If one is psychologically burdened or imbalanced, what are the most important decrees to give? Decrees are very important when all other things are equal. If you are psychologically burdened and you have an imbalance in your psychology, the cause can be many reasons. It can be an imbalance in your body, your bodily functions. You need to get help at the physical level and at the spiritual level. You can do a lot of decrees for the transmutation of the records that have caused uh, a difficult psychology. If I had a problem of being psychologically burdened or imbalanced, I would want to have the help of the professional preferably a professional, a healthcare professional that also understands the teachings of the Ascended Masters and the work of the inner child. To balance myself, I would give astraeus because if one is psychologically burdened or imbalanced, he or she may definitely have entities, entities of, of anything, sadness, anger, deeply buried events of, of childhood or past lives. I think Estrella, as El Mori has told us over the years, the calls to Estrella, to Estrella and our daily Estrella sessions are what has held the community together and cut free people in our community uh, of all the entities and demons and discarnates that like to come around spiritual people and steal their light. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that visitest him? Thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, but crowned him with more glory. That's the verse I wanted to give you in the understanding of why we can command angels. It's a little late, and I didn't get it right away. Is it worthwhile to decree while you're doing other things, or if you're not in the mood? Or if you're not in the mood? I have to read this one again. 
Is it worthwhile to decree while you are doing other things? Or I guess it means if, you were, if you're not in the mood to decree, should you decree anyway? Yes, absolutely decree if you're not in the mood to decree. That's <laughs> exactly when you have to decree, for sure. That's when we all resist decreeing, right? There's something that says, oh, I don't want to decree. It is worthwhile to do, do decrees while you're doing other things. And one thing about the short mon mantras and the Krishna mantras and all of our decrees is that when you know them so very well, you can say those decrees, be conscious of what you're saying, but also carry out um, tasks that you perform with your hands and other things that you're doing. I, I, love, to, I love to decree anytime, anywhere. It's, it's very important. Every time you decree, you could be saving a soul, somebody that's just in the depths of despair. And because you're decreeing, that soul will make it. You know, so always decree whenever you have a chance. It's just the most important thing. And you earn your stripes because you are saving souls, and that means you're also balancing karma by your good works of helping those. Please help us to understand the importance of arising f at, by 5 a.m. and giving our decrees. This is a wonderful request that St. Germain made at the Easter class. And the reason he said this is that we, if we get up at 5 o'clock and we give our decrees for an hour or whatever length we choose, we are transmuting the day before the day gets underway. We have already tr uh, transmuted a very important part of that day. So we have helped the world and helped St. Germain to get rid of that junk and that effluvia, which is go gonna go right back into the world and into the people. But because we're there at 5 a.m., we have this tremendous opportunity. If we, can, if we have the time to do it for one hour with intense violet flame decrees, all kinds of things will not happen in the world because you took that 5 a.m. period of time because a lot of people aren't up by then. Uh, a lot of people aren't into their mischief yet. <laughs> and so it's a perfect time to decree. The atmosphere is clear, the birds are singing. You know, you have this calmness on the face of the earth because there's not all these minds thinking how they're gonna make money, how they're gonna cheat each other, how they're gonna do all these things. So if you can go to bed early and decree at 5 a.m., that's the greatest time of the day that you can help St. Germain and the planet and the Chilas the most. What do the Ascended Masters teach about organ donation? I have had um, many different thoughts about this over the years. And I am somewhat ambivalent regarding the answer. However, when we see the passing of someone, whether a loved one or someone that we do not know, we realize that at a certain point, that soul is separated from the body. Our teaching says that the body should remain three days on ice and then cremated. Well, if we follow that rule, and it's a very important rule, we would not be giving organs, unless there are organs that can survive longer than three days uh, without being given to someone. Perhaps there are such situations. But the reason we put the body on ice for three days is that, that it actually takes the soul, the consciousness, everything that's a part of that body, three days to totally uh, disconnect itself from the body so that, that when the body is cremated, the soul will not feel uh, the flames of the cremation. So this is a rule that we, we have steadfastly kept and that the Ascended Masters have given to us. So I don't know enough about organ donation to know when organs can be donated on the fourth day. So that's as much as I know about that. What does it mean to say that a soul is a young soul? A soul is considered usually a young soul if they have come in during the latest root race, which would be the sixth root race. So many times we see um, those in the past 2,000 years, we speak of them as young souls because they were in the sixth dispensation. 
whereas older souls came in the fourth dispensation and the fifth dispensation. So young souls may not have experienced as much, may not have as much in their causal body, may not have as much uh, mental development and so forth because it can take thousands upon thousands of years for those faculties to mature and for souls to have uh, the experiences that they need to have to ripen and mature. So a young soul is a soul that has not been in embodiment too many times. Who created evil? The fallen angels created evil. Would aliens be able to abduct someone who decrees regularly? Well, it depends the regularity of your decrees. It depends uh, on a lot. If you are vulnerable to aliens because you have some connection to them, some tie to them that you may not even know about. Um, the point about aliens is they're around. Believe me, they're around. I won't go into all of my uh, encounters I've had, but my encounters are always at the altar where I perceive their attack and I go to work with my sword and I give my decrees until uh, the situation has been dealt with. But um, whether or not someone can be abducted who decrees regularly depends in large part about the power of your decrees and how you have protected yourself by obeying the laws of God. When we obey the laws of God, then the archangels protect us. When we're disobedient to those laws, we break those laws, whether they're spiritual, material, whether we compromise here, we compromise there. That makes us vulnerable. If you don't want to be vulnerable to evil, then you have to live by the cosmic honor code of God and not think that you can step over the line just a little bit and it'll be okay because when you step over the line a little bit, you're opening the door for the alien to get in. I mean, I've, I've seen spacecraft follow me, you know, from one end of the Earth to the other. I, I've seen it for years. I, I, I get out my sword. I make my calls. I do my judgment calls. And I tell them they have no power over me. But I don't take the situation lightly at all. And you shouldn't either. Krishna ex expressed, I believe, that we should be hid with Christ in God. We should be sealed inside of God on earth because earth is a very dangerous place to be living in at this time. And I believe it's going to get more dangerous. So the one thing I can tell you is that I have never had fear, a fear of aliens or their spacecraft. I just go after them, use my sword. So it's very important to overcome doubt and fear. And I really do want you, in the name of Krishna, to call upon my causal body to help you, strengthen you, uh, get through perhaps some difficult situations. Is it bad karma to be a homosexual from birth? What can I do? Well, let's not talk about homosexuality as good or bad. Let's talk about it as a state we find ourselves in, if you want to be free from the path of homosexuality, you have to deal with all four, lo four lower bodies. You have to deal with the, the proper foods. For instance, if you are a male, yet you are in the female role, you need to see yourself as putting on your manhood and your Christhood by eating foods that make people more masculine. So food and the physical body level is very important. And Stephen Acuff can tell you a lot about this subject. I have received lesbians and homosexuals in this community. Some of them are among my most precious staff over the years. Some of them are in various parts of the organization. And any numbers of them have overcome the burden 
that they want to overcome. Again, with the calls to Astraea, with a violet flame, with a proper diet, the proper physical exercise, and balancing in all things. There is no question that there is a war, a war that is being waged inside of the individual who is a homosexual or a lesbian. And it's a tremendous war. And I have done clearances and work for people who wanted to be cleared. And I have seen in the, the work of exorcisms that I have done of uh, a tremendous battle going on when I would wield my sword to bind the entity, the force, uh, the whatever evil demon is a part of that person that is entrenching this person and keeping that person enslaved to this path. So there's no question about it. If you want to no longer uh, be involved in homosexuality, you have come to the right place because it is the decrees of Almighty God and the intercession of the masters and it is the imploring of God. And, and when you make up your mind that this is what you're going to do and become, and you fight with all your might to accomplish it and, and give God the honor of helping you, he will do that. So there's no such thing as anyone not being able to change if they want to. It's a question of how hard and how long are you willing to wage this war until you have put this thing under your feet, until you have put Satan under your feet. And if you want to wage that war, I will help you. But it is a war, believe me. If God has shown you the person you are to marry and that person is not interested, what do you do? Well, <laughs> I don't know if you're a man or a woman, but you know, you, you may wine and dine her. <laughs> you may romance her, and so on and so forth. You might find out what someone doesn't find attractive in you and, and change. I would decree, I always go back to the altar. If something's going to happen, it's going to be at the altar. You know, the word altar means alteration. It means change. We go to the altar because we want change. So if we're not acceptable to someone who loves us, then if we really, if we really love that person, then we are going to have to change our ways so that person may get the idea that they may want to marry you. If you choose not to be pummeled by the guru, do you jeopardize your chances for the ascension? <laughs> El Moria has the answer. He says, if you don't take it from the guru, you'll get it from me. <laughs> take your choice. Everybody has to be pummeled. I was pummeled. I went through that for quite a number of years under El Moria and, and Lanello, and they wouldn't get me, let me get away with a thing. <laughs> Why don't you want to be pummeled? Why wouldn't you want to be pummeled? I don't understand it. What are you doing on the path of, of, of chileship? I, I don't get it. You have to be pummeled if you want to get to heaven. You think you're a saint? or something? <laughs> the Catholic Church is having a nationwide postcard campaign this weekend to write senators and congressmen to overturn Clinton's veto of the late-term abortion bill. They will do this from the pulpit and speak out. I was told that this church couldn't take a political stand. Why can the Catholic Church do this and we can't? because the Catholic Church has power and influence. That's why. The stand we have to take is a stand as individuals. It's a stand as individuals. It's a political situation. It has to do with a, a bill in Congress. So if we, we get up as a church and make our statement, 
this is not good. The IRS would be after us in a minute. We just spent five, five years getting the IRS off our backs. You can take an individual stand for life, anywhere you are, anywhere you go, in your name. But, but please don't do it in the name of the church, because it just gets us in trouble. I think we should all be st speaking out as individuals. It's, it's absolute murder of a child. Anybody who has ever seen a child born, I don't know how they could abort a child in the womb at term. It's absolute murder. We should call for the judgment of the bill, the judgment of the stand that the president is taking, but we have to do it in our own private names. This is, this is absolutely horrendous. What decrees help to establish the bonding of the inner child and the inner adult? You need to use the violet flame to erase the records of pain and hurt that you may have experienced in your home, in your family, with your parents, siblings, or others as you have grown up. Violet flame is the only thing that permanently erases our negative psychology. It's the greatest gift we have from God. And then the love decrees and the love rosaries, the love mysteries. It's a wonderful thing to open our hearts to love and especially love those who may have harmed or hurt us. I have listened to many teachings on our Holy Christ self, and yet I have still not had an aha in my understanding of its exact relationship to me. Who and what is our Holy Christ self, and what is its relationship to us and to God? Well, the I Am Presence is represented in, in the chart as the concentric rings of light, and the Holy Christ self is the person of the mediator. God is of two pure eyes to behold iniquity, and so he has sent us his son, the same son that is in Jesus. And through that son, we have the expression of compassion, the compassionate one, our Holy Christ self, our Holy Christ self as our teacher, and as one who is, who is speaks to us in the still, small voice of the heart. So that still, small voice is the person, personage of yourself whom you shall one day become. We are all intended to be Christ's. We have descended below that level. So we are the, with a low, lower, lower figure in the chart. So in order for us to make our ascension, we must first become the bride of our Holy Christ Self. The Holy Christ Self is masculine. We as souls are feminine. That's in all people, male or female. So you can think of your Holy Christ Self as your husband, as the representative of who you shall be, because who you shall be is the person who has merged with his Holy Christ Self. There are people in this world who are very loving and compassionate, and the Holy Christ Self is often with them and works through them and speaks through them. But they are human also, and so at times the Holy Christ Self withdraws. But you cannot make your ascension until you have that bonding. And the bonding means that when you return to your Holy Christ Self, you will never be separated again from the Holy Christ Self because the Holy Christ Self will not receive you unless you have balanced a certain amount of your karma and made corrections in your own personal life of things you know that you need to discard and things that you need to do a lot better. I hope this is helpful. Um, that's my statement on that. This question is, what happens to the Holy Christ Self if the soul goes through the second death? We might also ask, what happens to one's twin flame if that twin flame goes through the second death? The same thing, it's the same thing, whether the person that is, is being betrayed is an ascended master 
a Christed one or a human being. If your other half goes through the second death, then God provides for you at a certain point in time and space, or a certain point in heaven, provides for you a new soul who will be your counterpart in your twin flame. Nevertheless, it is very painful to go through a situation where your twin flame goes through the second death. Ascended masters in heaven today have twin flames who are going through the second death. And I can tell you, it is a very deep and profound sorrow that even an ascended master goes through in this situation. I thank you for your very kind attention. I'm going to excuse us at this time so that our conference doesn't get later and later. And we'll have these sessions again. Thank you so much for your attention. <laughs> <laughs>